record there. So what are, what we've done, if you haven't if you haven't been on uh, a lot of these, um, uh, we'll I'll do a little bit of teaching, and then um, probably the last five five to ten minutes, we'll um, I'm going to unmute the mics this time at the very end, and so anybody can talk. And then uh, we're recording this, so it'll go on to the uh, the website, and and it'll be a recording of the lesson. So um, if you've been with us in the last few weeks. Uh, we've been talking about anywhere uh, Jesus has said I am in the Bible. Uh, we've been talking about that. And um, we've taken our everyday worship theme and we basically said, well, how do we worship the Lord? How do we glorify the Lord with our lives? Well, we have to mimic his life. And, that's, and so that's what, what we've been doing. And so anywhere what we're studying is anywhere in the New Testament where Jesus says, I am, that's what we're going to look at. And so last week, we, uh, last week we looked at, I am the bread of life. Uh, the week before, we looked at, I am meek. And then we looked at, I am lowly. And then, um, and then this week, we're going to look at, um, I am the light of the world. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So I wanted, I want to, um, uh, if you're following along and you want to look along, we're going to be in John chapter 8 uh, today. And, and then, uh, so I'm going to pray here in just a second, and then uh, I'll get the last lesson. Uh, I will say if you, if you want to be on video, that's fine. Uh, if you don't, that's fine. If you, um, but I will unmute the mic at the end, so if you want to say anything, I have a few questions. We'll post them. I'll have Rachel post them in uh, the chat section so you can be thinking about it about halfway through and then and then we'll uh we'll talk about it at the end so it won't be too long but we'll we'll but let's go ahead and pray and then we'll get into it for today john chapter 8 where we'll be lord we thank you for your goodness to us may you help us today and to look at your word and see what you have for us from from your word and help us to uh, uh mimic your life and to follow your life and, and to and to see what we might be able to learn from you and Lord, I pray that you would change us, make us more like you as a result of our study today and our discussion today in Jesus' name. Amen. So we, we are in John chapter 8, John chapter 8, and um, I want to give a little backstory to this, uh, to this lesson. The, the lesson is, uh, is kind of in this, what you'll, what you'll find is that Jesus is uh, talking to these people, uh, talking to his disciples and these people in Matthew in John chapter eight, and he's talking about the fact that he is the light of the world. And there is some confrontation here uh, in this in the passage, and and then you find that he doesn't talk about it the rest of the chapter. He says he makes a statement, "I am the light of the world," and there's almost some controversy. And so I want to get into that, and then we'll we'll. Uh, We'll discuss it a little bit. But John chapter 8, verse number 12 says this, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And so when we break down this verse, what we see is we see uh, several things. It's really packed full of truth. But what we see here is that there's an immediate reaction towards the people that he's talking to in almost a negative way. And it's in response to a passage in, in, in John chapter number five and verse number 30. And I, I want to read verse number 13 here before I, I, I refer back to what's going on. But I want to, let me just read this again. Then speak Jesus on, again unto them saying, it's like this statement he's making about himself. He's saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And then he goes on in verse number 13 and says, the Pharisees, therefore, this is what happened, the Pharisees, therefore, said unto him, thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. So they're like, hey, Jesus, you said that you would not bear record of yourself. They're pointing back to a passage in, in John chapter number five and verse number 30, where Jesus says this, or where, where Jesus is saying this, he's saying, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has set me. It, and then he goes on in verse number 31 saying, 
if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. So what he is saying here, he's saying, I'm not going to come with my message. I'm coming the, with the message of my father. But yet when he makes the statement about I am the light of the world, they're saying, hey, we got you. What you're saying, we don't have to believe anything that you're saying now because you're saying that you're the light of the world. And he's saying, no, no, I was sent from my father. So what he does, it's almost like Jesus takes a detour saying, hey, hold on a second. I made a statement. I'm the light of the world. Jesus sent me to be the light, or God sent me to be the light of the world, and that is the message I'm bringing from my Father. And so he spends the rest of the chapter, the rest of the following verses, talking about, or almost following that rabbit trail that these people are kind of accusing of. And he says, almost, he says seven times in the following verses that I am of my Father, and my Father and I are one. He's talking about the fact that they're together. So he's not coming to do his will. He's coming to do the will of his Father. And so they're trying to they're trying to negate what he's saying by his statement, uh, the statement that he made in, 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 in John chapter number five and verse number thirty and thirty one. They're trying to negate that right here in verse number thirteen. So uh, I, there's a little bit of a detour. So I want us to keep in context with this passage because we're going to get to what this means. I am the light of the world and break that down. And then he goes on to verse number fourteen and says this: Jesus answered and said unto them. Uh, though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. He says, ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet I judge, it, and if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone. So again, he's going back to the fact that, hey, this is not, this. I'm carrying out the will of my father. I'm carrying out the will of my father. I'm the light of the world. And he sent me to be the light of the world. And, and so we're, th this is going to have a, a, a big bearing on what we're going to talk about here in just a second. So he says, for I am not alone. And then he goes on to say, but I and the Father, uh, I and the Father that sent me, it is, it is also uh, written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? And Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. So he goes on this detour, if you will, about the fact that Jesus, uh, Jesus is saying, I'm the light of the world. They're saying, whoa, 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 hold on. You said if you proclaim yourself as the light of the world or anything, if you, if you, if you propagate yourself, that your message is not true. And he said, no, no, I'm propagating the message of my father. My father sent me and my father and I are one. Okay. So you see how what Jesus is saying is, is really important here because they're trying to debunk uh, Jesus' statement of being, I am the light of the world. And the reason, uh, the reason it's so troubling to them is back in verse number 12. If we go back to verse number 12, I want to look at that again. What he says is, then spake Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. And so that passage is a lot of, there's a lot of different applications to that. Um, if you're recognizing Jesus as the light of the world, you won't walk in darkness. You know, that means that you're not going to continually walk in sin, but you're also not going to continually think wrong thoughts about God. You're not going to think wrong thoughts about the, uh, about the person of Jesus Christ. And so walking in darkness is not just sin, but it is in, it, it is in darkness of your mind, your thought life, every area of life. And so he's basically saying, if I'm the light of the world and you're following me, you're not going to walk in darkness. You're not going to walk in false in a false sense of your own, uh, the, these people are walking in, in, in false truth. And so what's happening is, they're, they're, um, and, and a lot of people, the Bible says, were saved at this time. They were saved. Their eyes were opened to the truth of Jesus Christ, and they were saved. They, were, they trusted Christ. And so I kind of want to break this down um, and, and look at some parallel passages before we, before we get to kind of the, uh, kind of the questions. But, um, the Bible refers to God as, or, and to Jesus as the light many times. First John chapter number one, verse number five says this. Uh, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. 
um, John chapter number 12 and ver verse number 36. While you have light, believe in the light that you may become the sons of light. Uh, Job chapter number 24 and verse number 14, uh, uh, 13 talks about that. Matthew chapter number 17, and he was transfigured before then, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And so the Bible again and again and again depicts Jesus as the light of the world. But there are passages in the Bible that then Jesus turns around and says, you're the light of the world. And so I really want to kind of talk about that um, and, and, and uh, kind of break down this verse um, a little bit more. And so the first point I want us to get is, in this passage is, out of this verse number 12 is this. When we follow him, we have him. When we follow him, we have him. Conversely, what that means is that when we're not following Christ in every way in our life, our thought life, our, our actions, every way, we're not following him, we're not partaking of him. I'm not saying that we're not saved. What I'm saying is we're not following his ways. And so, therefore, we're not walking in the light as he is in the light. And so when our fellowship, as the Bible says, when we walk in the, when we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with, another, uh, one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And so, therefore, the, the, um, the walking in the ways of the world and walking in the light of Christ uh, they they are not they cannot go together. They have to be separate. Meaning you can't do both at the same time. You kind of have to choose one or the other. And so uh, when we follow him, we have him. And conversely, when we when we're not following him, we're not. Uh, and so that's the uh, we don't have him. Meaning we're not partaking of his life. Not talking about the decision of salvation or trusting Christ to become a Christian. I'm talking more about the daily walk of truly abiding in Christ. And so walking in him. So when we follow him, we have him. So this is a life-changing verse. It really is, this verse number 12. It's a life-changing verse and if we see it for what it is. So if we see him for who he is, it, 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 it's going to be life-changing. If we see him as the light of the world, we say, okay, so every area of my life, that I am not walking in the light of Christ, I'm walking in darkness. Every area that I'm not walking in and recognizing Christ as my life. And so he is my life. So when we follow him, we have him. And so that's kind of the first part. So so um, it says, so he's, he's giving us that guarantee. If you're walking in me, if you're following me, you have me. He said that in verse number, I'll read that again. Then say Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. But shall have the light of life. And so that's the first point. When we follow him, we have him. So, so I want to I make this point real quick. The reason we become directionless and the reason other people become directionless in their life is because they have no, no light in their life at all, meaning they're completely in darkness or they're not seeking the light of Christ. So when Christians have periods of darkness in their life, they're not following the light, which is Jesus Christ. They're not following after Christ. And so we, we, um, we have to recognize that. And so when we get up, uh, when we get up our, uh, the path that God wants for us, and what Jesus has for us is when, we're, when we're, we're basically saying, okay, I recognize his life, but I'm not going to follow his life anymore. I'm going to do my own thing. That's when we start to walk in darkness. And so if, if you find it, what I find is this. I kind of take this test in my own life. I kind of say, if I start to become directionless in my own life, feeling like I'm lacking purpose, I'm lacking direction, I'm, 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 I feel like I'm just running around in circles, it's, it's a, it, it is a kind of a test to me to say, am I seeking Christ? Am I seeking the light of Christ in my life? Am I seeking to mimic his, his uh, characteristics in my own life? So he's saying I'm the light of the world. If you're following Christ, you're following him, you're going to have the light of life in life. So, the, so the, the fact is if I don't have the right path in my life, it's because I don't have the light, if you will, the light of Christ shining on my path because I'm not recognizing him uh, for that. And so um, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a really good point. So 
So when we have him or when we follow him, we have him. When we follow him, we have him. And then, and then uh, second of all, I want us to see that when we follow him, we have life. We have him, but when we follow him, we have life. And, and this is a great point, and, and, and verse number 12 shows us that as well. We really will lack purpose in our lives if we do not have, and we won't, we won't have a life that's fulfilling if we're not following Christ. And that's specifically for the Christian. Specifically for the Christian. I mean, and, and what I mean by that is this. It's like, yes, the lost person is in darkness. The person that hasn't trusted Christ, and they're seeking something as well. But for the Christian that does not seek Christ, um, they're going to they're gonna lack a life, purpose in their life. So when we follow him, we have life. And we see that again. Um, I, I want to read this verse. I think, it's, I think it's good. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Uh, that's John chapter 1 and verse number 4. I want to talk about that just for a second in this. In this idea of when we follow him, we have life. Okay? And so when we're following Christ, there is a sense in which his light becomes our life. And when we're not following Christ, we're abiding in darkness. And so therefore, the light of our life that should be shining isn't shining. And so there isn't a, there isn't an observance from the world to us looking saying, hey, there is light coming from that person. There's light from that coming from that person. There is a sense in which they're so different, and the, the glory of Christ was so bright. I mean, it, it, uh, it, 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 and when you think about God's glory, that people couldn't even, uh, people couldn't even uh, contain it. Uh, when you see in the Bible, the Bible says that nobody seen God at any time and lived, but Jesus Christ, his glory was so amazing. Um, you think about that, the glory of God and the person of Jesus Christ. And so when we follow him, we have life. I think that's the second point that's important. And, and, and so John chapter 1, verse number 4 is a great verse. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So any light that's coming from my light or your light is coming as a result of us following Christ. That's the only reason we would ever have light, light of the world that would, that would be a, a, a uh, and that, that attracts people. Uh, um, if, you've ever, if you've ever gone out, I tell you, I was out uh, a few weeks ago, and I tell you, I felt like I got lit up by the mosquitoes, and there's all these light around. What, what are they attracted? They're attracted to the light. Well, I, I'm not saying we're all bugs or anything like that. I'm saying, what I'm saying is, 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 is it's like, when we have light in our light, that attracts people to us because that light is coming from Jesus Christ. It's kind of like the sense in the sun is reflecting that sun, uh, the, the brightness from the sun is a reflection, and the, moon, the moon's light is reflecting, is a reflection of the sun, and therefore we're getting that reflection. So we are the reflectors of the glory of God, or the glory of, and, and so when we demonstrate the characteristics of Jesus Christ, in our lives, what happens is that light attracts people. I mean, it just does. And so uh, when we're following Christ, there is life there. There's life there. When we follow him, we have life. So when we follow him, we have him. When we follow him, we have life. And, and so I think that's an important, um, uh, important point. That means that it means that if we don't follow him, we do walk in darkness. That means that we're walking uh, in darkness. So I want I want us to see that. So Jesus being the light of the world means the world has no other light than him. No other light than him. If there is going to be light for the world, it will be Jesus. And so I have to remind myself of that. So the, the answer is not uh, um, creating a new personality. It's not creating different uh, habits in life that are kind of good habit. The answer in having light come from our life really is um, mimicking the life of Jesus Christ. And so that, that's a real, uh, you know, it's a real conviction to me. Um, there is no other light. So if I want to truly bring, bring glory to God, I'm going to have to reflect uh, the characteristics of Jesus Christ. And so 
And then the last thing is this. Um, when we follow him, we give light. We give light. We've already talked about that a, a little bit already. So it, 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 it means that we are unable to truly give off light from our life when we're not following Jesus Christ. We can't, we, 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 then, we then have no, nothing compelling, nothing inspiring to people. Um, nothing that is, nothing that is drawing them uh, really. Uh, and so we have to remind ourselves of that. And so here's a question. Here's some questions I wanted to talk about. Um, and before we talk about, let me just give you the questions, then I'll read a verse. Um, the question is this, what things keep us from seeking the life of Christ, which hinder our light shining before men? What things keep us from seeking the life of Christ, which hinder our light shining before men? All right, I'm going to read this verse, and then I'm going to unmute the mic, and then we can talk about that real quick. Um, the, uh, the verse is this, Matthew chapter number 5 and verse number 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So the greatest way for us to bring glory to God is to live in the light of Jesus Christ, to live out the gifts uh, uh, or the, not the gift, but the fruit of the Spirit in our life and truly, uh, truly mimic the life of Christ, and people will see those good works. So a lot of people think, well, I'm doing these good works. There are good things to do. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But, but really, truly, all of those good works should be through the motive of I want people to see Christ. I want people to see the light of Christ in my life. And so, um, so what things keep us from seeking the life of Christ, which hinder our light shining before man? And I'm going to open up. If you have something, I, if, um, if you have something you want to mention, go ahead and do it now. So I'm going to open up. If you want to, um, if you want to say something there, if somebody starts talking, you, you get the other ones. But we've unmuted you if you want to talk, or maybe we're trying. We're trying. Oh, you have to do it one at a time. Oh, okay. Well, why don't you do, if you, if you want to say something, you raise your hand, we'll unmute you, okay? Uh, you can't do that? Oh, there you go. Oh, you muted your, okay. Some people muted themselves. I'm still learning this thing. So if you have anything to mention. So the question was this, what things keep us from seeking the life of Christ, which hinder our light shining before men? Any, any, any thoughts on that? Or you can add something in the chat, however you, however you would like to. All right, so let me give you one, okay? While you're thinking about that, let me give you one. So what things can be, I will say it, it's a wrong view of God, a wrong view of what he wants in my life hinder me. They hinder me from seeking Christ. So when I have the wrong view of God, I, I don't seek him like I should. Okay, I don't speak in all things. So if I've done, let me give you an example. If I've done something wrong or I've sinned or I've disobeyed, I think, therefore, if I think of God this way, if I think of him as someone that is like kind of that's waiting in heaven to hit me over the head uh, with a club, then I'm not going to seek him in a way, and I'm not going to seek him out in a way that basically would see him differently. And so um, the seeing him the right way. And so... Um, or if so, that a wrong thoughts, wrong thoughts would be a hindrance. Okay, so what things keep us from seeking the life of Christ, which hinder our light shining before that? Um, that's one. Just the wrong, the wrong view of God would be one. Anybody want to add anything there? Okay. Um, how about this one? Wrong priorities. Wrong priorities would be one. Um, Wrong, wrong motives would be one. Three thousand lives could be one. Let me let me ask this one. Okay, so in what ways do we let ourselves walk in darkness? That's another question. In what ways do we let ourselves walk in darkness? I already kind of mentioned one. But what ways do we kind of let ourselves or allow ourselves to walk in darkness? I'll give you one that can happen. We allow ourselves to walk in darkness in times like this 
by thinking that no one cares. COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever. No one cares. All of a sudden, what happens? We get this depressed mind, this depressed heart, we start thinking bad thoughts. What happens? That's what that's what happens to us. So we're not walking in the light when we're allowing those thoughts. We're not seeing Christ as the light of the world when we're walking in those thoughts. Because why? Because we're not following him. We're not following his thoughts, his way of thinking, his his mind. We're not having his mind. Uh, as the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And so uh, think about that. In what ways do we allow ourselves to walk in darkness? I just mentioned one. Anybody? Anybody want to mention anything, okay? One more. What active steps can we take this week in following Christ that will in turn affect our workplace, home, stewardship, relationship, the lost world? You can put something in the chat if you want to say anything. You can just put something in the chat. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So the question again was this, what active steps do we take this week in following Christ that will in turn affect our workplace, home, stewardship, relationships, the lost world? And so uh, there's, here's one, here's one I could think of, all right? So I'm going to decide this week to do this. I'm going to decide to not allow myself to think thoughts that are untrue about myself or other people. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to allow myself to think thoughts about myself or other people that are untrue or about God, okay? That might be one, all right? So that walking in the light is he is in the light. Walking in the light is Christ in the light. So when he says, I am the light of the world, and we're following Christ, that's going to affect everything. It's going to affect our thought life. It's going to affect what we do and what we don't do. It's going to affect our relationships. It's going to affect all of those things. So of those three questions, uh, if there's anybody want to mention anything, uh, feel free to mention that. So we started in John chapter 8, and verse number 12, which says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So he is the light of the world. So when he says, I am, I mean, we're going to take notice of that each and every week. When he says, when Jesus says, I am, we're going to go, okay, what, what just happened? He's saying, I'm the light of the world. He's saying, look, there is nothing good that can come from our lives without the light of Christ shining in to our life. There's nothing good that can come from, from, from our lives other than the glorious light of Jesus Christ shining through us. And that's when we yield our lives to him. That's when we follow him. And so the three points were this. When we follow him, we have him. When we follow him, we have life. And when we follow him, we have light to give, or we give light to the world and to those around us. And so, um, and so, any 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 questions, comments, uh, anything, chat, anything you'd like to, anybody would like to mention. Some questions there. If you want to throw anything in the chat, everybody's quiet today. Everybody's quiet. Contemplator. Deep thinkers today. Well, I'm glad you guys jumped on, and I hope this was uh, a blessing to you. I want to pray for us before we jump off, and um, I'll stay on for a few minutes. If anybody wants to chat, well, Rachel's here. If anybody wants to chat afterwards, I'll stay on for a few minutes, and then if anybody wants to just fellowship or anything, that would be fine as well. But let me go ahead and pray. And then if you want to drop off, you can. If you want to stay around and chat, you can do that as well, all right? Uh, let's go ahead and pray. God, we thank you for your goodness to us. May you help us to be, um, Lord, just following you in our life, in our thought life, in our life uh, in, in general about what we choose to do and what not to do and how we um, interact in our, in our daily life just with people. Lord, I pray that you'd help us 
to follow you, to not walk in darkness, to get rid of wrong thoughts, wrong actions that wouldn't be pleasing to you. And Lord, let our light so shine before men that they may see your good work, uh, the good works in us that you've allowed us to be able to do because of the regenerated life that you've given us. And may they glorify you. May they see you. May we be a light to this lost world. And may you change other people as they see a difference in us. And may you give them a, a thirst and a hunger for yourself uh, because of our good works and the, the, the things they see through us. And so may we follow you as the light of the world and truly follow after you and try to mimic the characteristics that you, you show to us in your word in Jesus' name. Amen.